Hey, it's wonderful to be here. Thank you for such a beautiful film. Um, my question is for both of you. Um, there were so many familiar um, pieces from different films. I felt like it was just a wonderful combination, you know, with your story. Uh, tell me a little bit about the the things that you brought in from um, different films. Because I saw like, I felt like Wizard of Oz. I felt um, Mr. Uh, McGorm's Wonder Emporium. It was beautiful. Thank it's, you. It's, uh, well, for, you know, for me, well, good morning, ladies, uh, good morning. first of all. Uh, and, uh, for, you know, for me, growing up watching films, uh, my favorites, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory and Chitty Chitty Bang Bang and, uh, you know, the original Dr. Doolittle with Rex Harrison and uh, Mary Poppins, uh, all these, The Wiz, I mean, all these were my films growing up. And so they, you know, anything you watch as a kid, they inspire you, they influence you. And I just wanted to have something for this generation, uh, you know, to, to, to see and to, and I wanted people of all colors and backgrounds to be represented in worlds of, of wonder. You know, I grew up, there was no one that looked like me uh, that were, that could fly or had pixie dust floating on them. So, you know, uh, as a father of a little seven-year-old uh, black boy, I, I wanted him to see someone who looked like him in, in worlds of wonder and, and magic and, and, and people around the world to see themselves as well. So. And Wonderful. same here, same here, um, you know, I loved Annie growing up, curly red hair, uh, <laughs> and uh, Mary Poppins was a favorite also, and that's really what it was. I just loved being in that imaginary world and songs that you could sing in the mirror to yourself and um, all the things that we love to do as a kid, but it was, as David said, just really important mm -hmm. to um, show a world of all colors and especially something that our son could see himself in and feel like he could be magical, just like Mary Poppins and, and Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. So that was the real, the real thing. How do we bring this world together today? It's perfection. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you, Candy. Tati from Cool Moms Cool Tips. Hi. Hi, good morning. It's great to see you. Um, I, do have to, <laughs> I do have to echo uh, Candy's comments on a wonderful and beautiful film production storytelling, just about a fantastic package put together for us. Um, I see behind you, um, David, there's a beautiful, lovable character from the film. The film is full of amazing props and the set is Oh, and so rich of different things that really caught my eye at different times. I was wondering which was your favorite prop from the different sets that you had? Uh, I, I would probably say this guy here um, around the eyes of the Buddy 3000, you see the written Elias 260. Elias is our son and 260 is the address of my great grandmother who is my heart. Oh, wow. Uh, my heart. Um, her address is 260 Kentucky Avenue, Southeast DC. And, um, and so those are my angels. She's my angel in heaven and that little boy there. So kind of that's the most special because, you know, those are my two, you know, inspirations. Melissa Dandelion Women. Hi, yes, it was so beautifully done from the costumes to the hairstyles, um, just everything and the musical numbers. You guys did such a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I read in the notes that you were inspired to write the story from a poem that you had written. Can you tell me, um, is that correct? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, it was, a, it was a poem that I wrote, it was uh, love, it's in the air, it's in the trees, it's on dry land and in wet seas. It's a twinkle in a child's eye. It's the brightest star way up in the sky. Love, it fixes whatever's broken. And when doors start closing, love keeps them open. And, and, and that was yeah. the, it, kind of the, the, the spirit of, of it. And it's just a, it's a really a, a film about love. It's a film about humanity and family and 
finding your mojo again. So that was what inspired me. Love is the inspiration for most of the work that I create. Well, it was just so beautiful. Yeah, you guys, it was, yeah, it's right up there. You said your inspiration was Willy Wonka and all these like magnificent, um, timeless classics. I feel like this is going to be one of those. Thank you. Thank movies. you. Veronica's Django, Willy Wonka. Uh, uh, you got Karatikas <laughs> Potts. You got Mary Poppins. You got Geronica's Django. That's the, that's the Mount Rushmore of uh, iconic characters. Danielle, Della's Jubilation. Good afternoon. Hi. Hi. Thank you so much for making this movie. Um, I have my own two brown boys here who were dancers. And so the choreography was a big deal for them. It's hard getting boys sometimes into musicals. And um, their favorite was The Greatest Showman. So it's awesome that you had um, Ashley Whalen on this. What was the choreography like and why did you decide to like mix in, you know, classic theater with African dancing? I know you had a popular Instagrammer on there. What was that whole process like? Um, well, we wanted to make sure that you could identify the dances right away. And I'm, I'm sure that your son saw, we even had stepping from the, the fraternities and uh, it, it was just really important to kind of bring that classic element in with all the modern elements. So it would be really relatable for kids today. And Ashley Wallen is amazing and we were huge fans of Greatest Showman. So he, it was so fun to collaborate with him and for him to find different ways and different layers to bring the whole dance world to life. And, you know, David decided to shoot it like the old MGM films so that you could see the full dance, which is important for dancers, I'm sure for your boys, because then you can learn the choreography as well. So um, it, it, that was some of the most fun and make it work. You know, I, I wanna see all these kids doing the dances from make it work and from this day, but yeah, really, really exciting. Yeah, and actually, uh, you know, I went to HBCU, so there was nothing like going to a step show, a, 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 a black fraternity step show. So I told Ashley had them pirouetting in the town square, and I said, okay, Ashley, now we got to make this a little bit more soulful and ground. I said, go online and look at the uh, Omega Sci Fi, the Q Dogs, and look at Af Alpha Kappa Psi, the, the, the um, not Alpha Kappa Psi, but Kappa Alpha Psi, the, uh, um, and uh, I said, look at them and let's infuse a mixture of traditional uh, dance with, with, with stepping, which of course originated from uh, Africa, you know? And so I wanted to infuse it so that the world felt like uh, it was being embraced. And, and so, so we mixed a lot of the classic traditional um, dance style with, with, with stepping and with uh, parkour and all those kinds of things and it just turned out really well. And Danielle, you mentioned um, one of the young ladies who were, was in the snowball scene. We found her on Instagram because I really wanted to have that African dance that everyone was doing in that scene. And so she's amazing. Her name's Princess K and she, Ashley incorporated all of that in that scene. And oh my gosh, the, we were in the streets of Norwich playing Biza Kadi, doing African dance. It was amazing. Lynette, fantastic life. Hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, so my family and I noticed that one of the luggage stickers when Forrest Whitaker was opening up was from Wakanda. Uh, uh. Very we had to rewind and watch it again. We were so moved by that. So can you share some maybe other Easter eggs or fun facts about the film that we may not know or that we can look forward to? Well, you know, uh, Black Panther, that film inspired me. So just to see uh, uh, Africa um, depicted uh, in that light as it was. And, um, and it was just inspired me so, and they raised the bar so much. The film was so excellent. And so that was my big inspiration for just kind of blowing this film out of the water. 
And so that was a little kind of uh, shout out to the grand country that Geronicus has traveled all around the world. Even he's been to the grand country of Wakanda. And uh, I'm, glad, I'm glad you saw that. But there's a lot of Easter eggs. All of the names of the uh, buildings are named after uh, African-American inventors and innovators. And all the names on all the buildings. Um, uh, one that sits in arms, that's uh, uh, Lynn's father, who was the first black optometrist in Las Vegas. You have uh, Tharps in music, that's Sister Rosetta Tharps, who, who, who's considered the godmother of rock and roll. You have uh, A.M. Woods, which is on the corner, that's my great grandmother, uh, who was the invention of heart for me and love. She invented it, that woman invented it for me. Um, so it was important for me, I, I'm sorry. It, this film, to have the ancestors and to have great people who have gone before us, be able to like guardian angels watch over this production. Uh, it was very important and you felt an energy, a soul, a spirit there. Um, uh, North Star you see in a building there. Well, that's of course was the newspaper of Frederick Douglass who uh, uh, in the Underground Railroad and all those things. So we wanted to honor not only this character I created, Jeronicus Jangle, as the greatest inventor of all, but we wanted to honor all those who have not been honored. Um, um, Edison's character, when he introduces himself, he says, I'm Edison, Edison Latimer. Well, Louis Latimer, the black inventor who was credited as helping Thomas Edison uh, invent the, the light bulb. So all these things in there was just really to honor the past with something that was for the, the present. And I'll tell you something else, Lynette, um, and, and some other Easter eggs, and little did we know what was going to happen with Chadwick Boseman, so that was a nice honor to him as well. But um, Felicia Rashad's character, uh, her wig was inspired by, I wanted something different and edgy for the character, and so I said, I want a Tina, I want a Toni Morrison meets Lena Horne for that, and I spoke with Miss Rashad about it and she was like, yes, let's do it. She said, I'm going to call Tony and I'm going to tell her. I'm going to tell her that she inspired this wig. And I was on set with her the day that she shot and Tony Morrison passed away. And I actually had to tell her when we got off set. And you're, you're just like, I, you know, as David said, there are so many things and so many magical things that we felt connected to. And we didn't know that these things were going to happen. You know, when John Lewis passed, we were able to name the bank after him that you see at the end. Um, so there's so many things that we were able to historically give honor to. And it's something that everyone will look back on forever. So really grateful for that. It was beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. I'm a big old softy, you all. <laughs> I'm a big old softy. Tessa from Mama's Geeky. Hey guys, thank you so much. This movie oh. was oh incredible. I watched it with my girls yesterday and we absolutely, absolutely loved it. Um, but Thanks. Lynn, you were saying Friday night that this was kind of a long process. This is something you guys, so what did it feel like when you finally got like the go ahead to make this and to do this? Oh, we lost it. We, you know, we're still kind of in this dream of how everything's being laid out and to finally see it finished. I mean, we literally just finished it a couple of weeks ago, you know, all the way to the bitter end for everyone. And so we're, we are still in a daze, like how you were feeling, we feel because it's, it touches us how it touches you, you know what I mean? So something that we've always wanted for ourselves, we've, had the opportunity to make. And when we watch it, it's something we've always wanted to see. So I, I, I can't even, I'm just, I'm still kind of in awe of everything. And, and like, oh my gosh, look at Buddy and look at Don Juan and look at everything that we did. And I forget that we did it sometimes, to be honest with you, because I get caught up in the story and enjoying it as well. So just really, really proud. And I'm so glad you enjoyed it. This is how your reactions to everything is everything we ever wanted. Thank you. 
Robin from Mom the Magnificent. Hi, thanks so much for taking the time to chat with us today. Um, I just want to say congrats on such a magical film. I really think it's going to be one that's going to be enjoyed for generations and generations to come. So congrats thank on you, that. Um, my you. question is, why was it important for you to include um, the STEM element in this movie? When I was watching it with my youngest daughter, her favorite subject is math. So she said, Journey loves math just like I do. So I thought that was really neat. I'd love to hear why you wanted to incorporate that. You know, I think it's important to, to show uh, not only the, the uh, performing arts elements of song and dance and all that, but to really show that all kids are not only um, magical, but mathematic and scientific and, in, 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 and innovative. And I think it's just going to inspire young girls uh, all around the world, young boys to um, kind of break out of what would be stereotypical. Uh, what would be expected, and that there's really no ceiling. I mean, one of the songs that's, that moves so much is it, it's all possible. You know, watch me rise high above my obstacles. Watch me become who I'm supposed to be. Oh, the possibility. Don't tell me it's too far to go. I know that I'm unstoppable because the square root of impossible is me. And, and, and just uh, being able to put that kind of uh, energy out and thought out into the world. I mean, look at the generation that's going to be watching this and that's going to say, well, they're, they're nothing that I can't accomplish. And, and I think it's just, it's, it's important to put those kind of images out into the world. So in, in mathematics and in, in science and all that, it's just, uh, um, I think it's important to, sh to share. And I'll tell you too, Robin, I mean, we, we want kids to find their square root of possible. You know, we want them to figure out what are the things, what is their formula to make things successful? And that's the theme throughout. You know, we had to push through to make this film happen and we want them to find that square root of possible. So it, it, I'm, a, I'm a, a bit of a nerd and a geek when it comes to that stuff as well. So it, we loved wrapping it around such a lush story and a, and a beautiful setting to where kids will be like, I, I, I want to do that too. I like that too. You know, this, this looks fun and good. So any way to encourage them to like homework, <laughs> to like math, you know, we're going to try to find a way. Thank you so much. Kathy from Mrs. Kathy King. Oh, we can't hear you, Kathy. We can't hear you. My my headset was muted. Sorry about yeah. that. Um, What's up, Queen Kathy? Yes. King. Hi. This question is for both of you. Um, the movie is beautiful, and what me and my husband as Christians noticed is there's a lot of very moral lessons in this tie weaved into the story. What lesson or what takeaways do you hope kids will get from seeing this film? Well, faith, you know, my, I was raised by three generations of, uh, of pastors and preachers. I'm the, I'm the only one who seemed to have fallen off. I don't think they, when they baptized me, they maybe they didn't keep me under the water long enough or something, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, you know, that's who I am. And not so much religious as, uh, um, you know, spiritual and, but faith is a, you know, Veronica is a journey, is a faith journey. It's a, uh, it's fine trying to believe in yourself and it's not about religion, but it's just about trying to reconnect with what's in you and um, realizing that things work. A lot of things as adults for me, I wrote that character for me because a lot of times you go through life and you lose that faith you and you stop believing in things, but um, things have worked all along. They've just been waiting for you to believe in them. Uh, and so um, that's, I think, a message for everyone. I think it's a message for adults. Children will get that as they get older, but I think it's for us to, uh, you know, pull that, pull that uh, old book that you had tucked in your hard drive that you were trying to write and you're like, ah, oh, it's no good. No, maybe it is good. You know, you know, pull out that old song or whatever you're trying to do. And, and I think that's a message for everyone. Yeah. which is spiritual, which is moral, but it's, it's, it's you know, 
think everyone can wrap their minds around that. Yeah, um, I agree. And also, we, you know, we want to take away um, forgiveness and helping those whose light has maybe dimmed, help them make it shine bright again. You know, um, it, it's just so important. You know, there are times when, you know, my son can feel that I'm having a hard time and he'll stop and he'll come, he'll go, mommy, take a break. He's like, it's okay. It'll be fine. We'll come back to it later. And it's this exact same things that I say to him when he gets frustrated and he turns around and does it on me and it works. So, <laughs> um, but it's, it's really about all of those things. You know, you, you always want your kids to be good kids and you want to raise good people and kind people. And um, I think that that's really important. You know, we need a little more kindness in the world today. And so um, that, that was a big takeaway for us, you know, to shine a light for those who light, whose light has dimmed and forgive and be kind to each other. And our last question will be Onika, the mommy factor. Yeah, hi. Yeah. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Let me see where you are. Oh, oh okay. I'm over here. Okay. Red. <laughs> All right. You got the headshot up there. Yeah, it's Sunday morning here. Um, so my question is, how did you decide what holiday themes and ideas to keep in the film and what to change? Well, for me, it it's it's is not as much a, a holiday movie as a movie that takes place during the holidays. Um, and, uh, and, you know, the holidays are um, some, of, you know, always portrayed as, as some of the happiest times, but there's some of the, uh, the, the, the times that uh, have the most pain in them too, because you remember people that were once here that are no longer here. Uh, or you remember that toy that for me, it was a rock'em sock'em robots that I didn't get. Uh, well, I got it, but my brother knocked off the, the, the head of the one on the first day when I opened it up and I was crying. Ah! Uh, so, but uh, the holidays have a lot of, uh, I wanted to, the, the tradition was really family is the biggest thing to take away from this for me, the tradition of family and being able to restore the family. Um, and for 22 years with my wife, we've had a uh, wonderful family uh, traditions, just she and I. And then when my son came in there, she brought in all the traditions from what she did as a child. I brought in all the traditions, what I, you know, I experienced as a child. And I think holidays are really family and, and connecting, you know, and, and I think that's, that's what the film shows. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I agree. And I, we we wanted to create a tradition as well, because this is the type of film that you get together, gather with your family and watch. And um, to be able to have something like this, our goal was to have that classic holiday piece that you could sit down with your friends and family year after year after year and watch. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm a huge, you know, holiday fan and Christmas in July and you name it, the, ho the, the ornament sale after the holidays <laughs> where you, you know, get the big sales and collect on things. So it's, it's a lot of fun. I love the sparkle of it all. And most importantly, my friends, my family, food, food especially. Um, but that's really something that we wanted, something that everyone could sit down year after year and just enjoy a moment in time with their family watching this classic film. Yeah, yeah, and let's be honest, the holidays, the holiday film, a, a slate of films needed some infusion of soul. <laughs> I, I mean, it was, holiday movies are all, there's no soul in any of the holiday movies. I mean, so we needed something that was diverse, something that represented the world. And, you know, our, my grown up, we would listen to from Donny Hathaway's This Christmas to Mahalia Jackson, to, uh, you know, we would listen to all Al Green Christmas, so everybody would be dancing and everything. Boys to men. <laughs> yeah, I think the soul, uh, mine was the Jackson 5. I mean, I know all the Jackson 5 stuff on the Jackson 5 Christmas, but I think the, 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 the dance and the celebration, I mean, 
I'm dreaming of a white Christmas is a wonderful song, but it want you want it putting you to sleep. I mean, we need something. <laughs> We need this day. We need yes. possible. We need make it work. We need magic man G. We need all these things that are uplifting and celebrational, especially the time that we're in right now. I mean, we need to find soul again and song again and connect ourselves to the universal language of music. And I think this film uh, allows us to do that. Awesome. Thank, Thank you guys so much for your time. I told you I was uh, three generations of preachers, so I've got a you know, I, I can't help myself, so. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. I'm so glad you enjoyed the film. Thanks so much, everyone. Beautiful Thanks film. so much, everyone. Nice to see you again.